All right, and here we go. We're going to be starting the game. Now, the first map that we're going to be playing on is Lost Temple. Right. So this is a classic map from the original StarCraft. It's been redone a little bit for StarCraft 2. It's given us the option to add some new play mechanics, and you'll see some of these come online during the game. All right, so up here in the 12 o'clock position, we do have Sonky playing as that Red Zerg, as we had talked about earlier. And all the way down in the lower left-hand side, that is the 9 o'clock, we do have uh, Yellow playing as the Blue Protoss. That's right, so Lost Temple is still a map where it's very easy to rush, but you can also sometimes defend on it if you move very quickly to, to position yourself. And these players are starting kind of close together, so it should be really interesting to see what happens in this opening part of the game. All right, now in the beginning of the game, we can see up here, Sanki is already sending out that Overlord, going to try and scout the other player as soon as possible. StarCraft 2, exactly like uh, the original StarCraft, it is important to know exactly what your opponent is up to. Yeah, absolutely. Scouting is really, really critical if you want to survive these opening parts of the game. We've got some new terrain mechanics in the game that can really be key and trying to figure out what's going on with your enemy. If we come over to the middle of the map, we've got these Zelnaga watchtowers that we can use to spot enemy troops. If you capture one of these towers, um, if you capture one of these towers right there, you'll be able to actually um, see what's going on around the tower. So it's very important for the players to grab these towers. That tower in particular will be really key for this match. And it'll be especially key because, again, it is right in between them. Now, a radius that this is going to give them is just about that large. So you can see that it's much larger than just having your screen. So if you're able to keep a unit there, you're going to be able to see an enormous, mar an, an enormous part of the minimap any time that you want. Yeah, absolutely. We can overlook at the Zerg base or the Protoss base. We see the Protoss player sending a scout. He's got his first gateway up. This is pretty typical of what we'd expect to see. And that, that probe is going to the right position. It's moving in to see what's going on inside the Zerg base. And he has seen that Zerg fast expand. That's really important for the Zerg player to get that expand in there and make use of it, but the Protoss player has seen what's going on. It can make a real difference in his next few moves. So this could mean that we're going to see Yellow likely retaliate by building a bunch of Zealots very early in the game. He's going to need to push that Zerg as soon as possible or else he's going to be in very big trouble because the Zerg is almost 100% certain to surpass him in economy. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like Star the original StarCraft, StarCraft 2 economy is extremely important. If you out-resource your enemy, you have a huge, huge advantage in facing them down. And here we have back over at the Protoss player's base. He does have a second gateway down, so we are going to see him going for a bunch of zealots early. His first is almost complete. And it's looking like he's just going to be throwing down a second pylon. He is prepared to go in for a ton of zealots. He needs to have all that food ready as he pumps them out. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to go for a fast rush here, it looks like. Try to take out that desert expansion, or at least threaten it. Disrupt its ability to produce in order to get access to all that additional resources he's going to have. It looks like the Protoss player is taking a very aggressive stance to what was a very bold move by the Zerg. And now back over at the Zerg player's base, it's looking like he is just about to finish up his spawning pool. He definitely needs that to finish as soon as possible, or else he is going to have no defenses available for that expander. Here we have the Zealot making his way into that hatchery, and he's going to be pressuring it as quick as possible. Yellow is also using his probe to pressure, now he's going to be moving into Sonki's main base, probably try to take out that spawning pool or some drones. And there go, the, it looks like the Zerglings are in production there. This is going to be a real race for the Protoss to see how much damage he can do before those Zerglings come out. Doesn't look like very much. The Zerg are retaliating, they're surrounding that lone Zealot and that probe, trying to wear it down. Oh, and those Zerglings are just about to finish off that Zealot and Probe. It is not looking good, but they have already done a ton of damage to the economy. Over here on the unit menu up in the top left of the screen, we can see that now it's looking like Sonki actually only has 10 drones to a massive 16 that Yellow currently possesses. Yeah, see, he really used the terrain very well. The Zerg player backed up to a small corner where he was difficult to surround, and he kept his Zealot alive, and you can see he's still got two Zealots running loose through the Zerg base, doing what kind of damage they can, continuing the harassment, trying to distract him. You see the distraction has been largely successful despite the expansion it looks like the Zerg player is a little bit behind in terms of what he can be resourcing. Ooh, and Saki was able to get that surround on a few of those Zealots right there and take out two of them, and now he's only got six Zerglings versus two Zealots. That is no match for those Zealots, but the Zerglings are going to fall back to behind the Shrine Crawler because they know that it's not good. Now, Yellow seeing this happen is going to take back those Zealots as soon as he can to try and build up his army just a little bit more. And here's a tech move that's kind of interesting. He's not going for a cybernetics core like I would expect. He's going for a forward to allow him to build more defenses. I guess he's expecting he's sort of lost his position on the ground. And he's going to hole up and tech up here and see what he can get to before the Zerg finally overrun his position. He's got his zealots at the choke. They are blocking the choke, which will prevent the Zerg from getting in, at least for the short term. 
And then we have a ton of Zerglings heading out from Saki. That's almost 18 Zerglings. Now, one of the differences that you might notice here in StarCraft 2 is that you control much more than 12 units at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Really, we've really improved the UI, so you can really control a large number of units. And we've added a lot of additional mechanics on the units themselves, because you really have to watch what's going on and make sure you're using all of your units effectively, because there's so much more micro that's possible with some of these new units. Well, now Saki actually is going for a third hatchery, so he's likely going to be massing production. He's trying to build his economy back up. He was able to catch yellow just about in terms of number of workers, but he is still behind. We do see that he has 18 Zerglings out on the battlefield to Yellow's seven Zealots. Yeah, so it looks like the Protoss are actually doing pretty well when it comes to economy. Here you can see one of our other overlays. You can see who has the most money in troops on the battlefield. And right now the Protoss is a little bit ahead. They are actually doing really, really well in terms of the amount of forces they have on the battlefield. And it looks like the Protoss player is aware. He knows what we know, and he's pushing in to see what kind of damage he can do to this Zerg. He's absolutely feeling a, a little frisky there. He's trying to move in on those Zerglings, but the Lings, of course, are going to fall back into the creep where they actually move faster. That's fine. Call is going to be laying down a bunch of defense on top of all those Zealots. And there we have the Zerglings going for the surround. We're going to see a lot of damage. One Zealot's just about to go down. It is surrounded. We have a bunch of Lings losing three Lings there at the time. We do see one more Zealot going down. They're going to be trying to focus down that Spine Crawler. We see Sanki bringing in all of his drones to try and back them up as much as he can. That Spine Crawler is just about to go down, but he's looking like he's running out of Zealots. Oh, and the Spine Crawler goes down. There's now only four more Lings remaining, and he's going to have to resume to using all of those drones to try and stop them off. Yeah, what a desperate, desperate move by the Zerg player trying to survive. He's used a lot of his economy there in the battle, and you can see he took just a lot of damage there in that fight. And the Protoss player is continuing to push. He's got a Zealot in the base. He's got more troops on the way. Ooh, and it's looking like he's got a Roach Warren in play. This is going to be very effective against Zealots because they're going to be able to actually kite them very easily on that creep and be able to regenerate their HP incredibly fast. Yeah, if the Zerg player can last that long, he'd be very powerful with those Roaches. The Roaches regenerate so fast, it's very difficult for the, for the uh, Zealots to surround them and really do a lot of damage. He really needs range if he wants to deal with Roaches, if they can come on. You can see the Protoss player is expanding here, and he has put down a Twilight Council. This opens up a huge number of tech options for him. The most immediate one that's important is, of course, Zealot Charge. be very powerful for him right now, allowing his adults to move more quickly. He could be building immortals, though maybe not such a great choice unless we start to see a lot of roaches on the battlefield. Well, we do see a uh, only one roach out in play right now. It's looking like he's building a Templar archive, so we're probably going to see Archons, perhaps. Yeah, that's a great choice against the Zerg, of course. And of course, he can use a Psy Storm as well. Still a great ability, just as it was in the original StarCraft. Very, very powerful in StarCraft 2. The pathing is a little bit better in StarCraft 2, so the units tend to bunch up a little bit more. It means sometimes you get a little bit more out of Psy Storm than you're used to seeing. Ooh, and now we have an enormous army. As soon as Sanki was able to see that expansion over in front of Yellow's base, that's Yellow's natural, he is going to send over those Zerglings to try and pressure them before the rest of the cannons are able to finish. Are they going to be any match for these three just about to get finished photon cannons and two Zealots? Oh, and we've got a lot of pressure. Oh, as soon as Sanki sees those like out there, that. he's going to run away. Yeah, he didn't want to give up on that many Zerglings in that fight. He had a pretty good position there, but still it would have been extremely costly. He might very well have lost it, so he's going to back away. Going to get some more Roaches in play. Now the Roaches are fairly easily countered by the Photon Cannon, so the Roaches are not the perfect unit for this attack. Still, the regeneration can be extremely powerful, and if he uses them in a very clever way, he may gain some advantage. You can see he's just activated the Watchtower, but he already knows what's going on, so he's going to push in on the Protoss. And here we go. It's looking like those Roaches are just going to be micro He's probably going to send those in first so that they're going to take some of the damage. No, but he's pulling back as soon as he sees that all three photon cannons are now finished and a fourth one is building. He's going to be getting out of there. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map in the three o'clock, it's looking like Sanki is expanding again. He is certainly trying to win this by just overall outproducing yellow. This is a classic example of what the Zerg can really do. They can expand so quickly all over the map. And that's sort of a hidden expansion. It's not